Welcome to the World United. Welcome to the World United. Welcome, Mel Harrison. And Mel, give me a minute while I read your bio and introduce you to all our people. So our next speaker is Mel Harrison. Breaking down disability barriers, inspire, educate, and facilitate. Motivational speaker and educator. Mel Harrison is the founder of Sitting Low, Reaching High, which captures how Mel lives her life, starting at the bottom and always conquering a challenge to climb higher, always using resilience to push through when the barriers are in the way by making the impossible possible. Mel is based in Sydney, but has provided motivational speaking and education for over a decade, and is blogging to break down barriers and explore all aspects of life, including adaptive fitness, travel, work, and recreation, showing that you never know someone's ability until you've given them the opportunity to explore it. Mel uses personal anecdotes and humor to engage her audience, either through training, presentations, or through her writing. Mel has lived with her disability since she was 14, a disability which requires her to use a manual wheelchair. Mel has had a lifetime of medical problems, which has resulted in many surgeries and hospital stays. But this has never stopped Mel from living the life and challenging herself to grow. Diversity and inclusion is a huge passion for Mel as she strives to break down barriers, remove stereotypes about people with disability and show that there is ability within everyone. Mel challenges the ideas of labels as she never fit into a typical label or defined herself as being disabled. Instead, the wheelchair is an added feature in her life, which enables her to move freely. Mel thrives on being challenged and has traveled Australia wide and experienced many adventures such as sailing from Tasmania to Sydney, France to Holland, skiing, camping, bushwalks and has traveled around the world to have adventures such as climbing the Acropolis. You are so inspirational, Mel Harrison. Thank you. Welcome, for, welcome for so much. Can you, can you see the slides? Yes. Hang on. Sorry, yes. so I need to put it as um, this. Is it Needing to go on the slideshow, yeah. Is that okay on the big screen or not? Yes, it is. Do you want to go on slideshow? Because we can see your uh, slides on yeah, the side. I'm so that's fine too. I'm just trying to do that. Oh, yeah. Got it. Sorry, everybody. No problem. That better? Perfect. Excellent. So welcome everybody, thank you. And thank you for that lovely introduction. Um, so my name is Mel Harrison and I'm the founder of Sitting Low, um, Reaching High. So um, I guess um, for me, just to talk about um, who I am and my, my life and um, what I've actually gone through in my life. So I'm, I'm now 40 years old and I have lived with um, medical issues since the day I was born, um, but I've also had a significant disability since the age of 14. So um, I ended up in um, having to use a wheelchair at the age of 14, so a manual wheelchair. Um, but in my life, um, I've had 38 surgeries. So, um, and 16 of those were on my spine. So getting um, cut open from the top to the bottom um, and that ended in the result of ending up in a wheelchair um, in itself. And I've also got a hearing impairment. So I do use a, um, a set of hearing aids as well. And for me, I guess the reason why that I started the whole concept of sitting low, reaching high is um, as you can see from the, the, the picture that's um, up high, that's a graphic of myself um, rock climbing. Um, so I very much like the, the fitness um, side of things and doing things where 
um, I guess the mainstream society thinks that people with disability have the inability to be able to do. So I like to push those limits quite a lot. And the reason I put it down as sitting low, reaching high is because I'm quite, quite short um, in my wheelchair and I'm always sitting quite low, um, obviously because I'm having to sit, but I'm always um, trying to reach high. And I guess it's not about me reaching high for myself. It's about me reaching high for other people um, as well. So for the last 20 years, I've worked in um, disability and a lot of the reason that I do work in disability is to try and like push and change those perceptions that are out there towards people when they're thinking about working with people with disability. Because often when we work with people with disability, it's the issue around how do we communicate or our awkwardness as human beings um, that's the issue when it comes to um, working with um, people that have disabilities. So I guess for me, it's about challenging those perceptions. And because when we challenge those perceptions, we're not just challenging the perceptions for the person that we might be working with, we're challenging those perceptions for, for ourselves as well, because we as individuals always need to be challenged. And we as individuals um, can grow and we can like you know make those choices and we can we can grow and we can um, learn to adapt in the way that we're working when we start challenging ourselves a little bit more. So things about resilience and ways to overcome adversity. So for me, very much resilience is um, for me has always been about. What, what do we need to do? Like, how do we actually get there? What's the things that are stopping us from, from getting there? When we think about think about disability, we think that, you know, when it just comes to Australia alone, 20% of Australia have a disability. And um, when it comes to Australia as well, 11.5% of us will live with some form of disability in our lifetime. And that's because we're an ageing population. And then when we think about worldwide, 14% of the world will live with some form of disability. So it's actually a huge issue that's out there, but it doesn't mean that it should be an issue. It should just become something that we start working towards and we start working how do we actually work within it for us to all work together. Because when we think about disability, the biggest disability issue that's out there or the biggest barrier that's out there is the environment or the attitudes that are placed towards the person with a disability. I'm huge when it comes to adaptive fitness and adaptive recreation and adaptive, adaptive travel. So I travel to 24 countries um, across the world um, and obviously that's pre-COVID um, um, but I've also travelled all around the, um, Australia as well many, many, many times. When it comes to fitness, um, I'm out there all the time trying to better myself. But I guess it's also about often when people think about fitness, people think it's about, you know, people thinking about what they're looking like and what their physical appearance is going to be like. Me, fitness is very much about my mental health. It's about me being able to place myself and being OK with the situation that I'm in. But it's also about the physical health in terms of ensuring that I can live longer and I can actually um, participate in activities for a lot longer because I'm actually putting in those steps to actually improve my my physical health but my mental health as well. But I've been very fortunate that I've been training with my PT that's on the screen for the last seven and a half years and he's ensured that I've gotten to be able to do things that I never thought that I'd be able to do. So little things such as being able to rip out 10 chin-ups at a time next to a, a man that's got no disability at all and I can beat him doing that, things like that, you know, I never thought I'd be able to do. But I guess that comes down to is that we all need that bit of support that's behind us. We, we can't do things by ourselves. So who do we trust and who do we actually go to to get that support? Because that support will help us to be able to achieve the things that we need to achieve. So things like doing like the Dubbo Stampede um, recently or a couple of years ago, I should say. Um, so doing that, that was a, an event that happened at the Dubbo Zoo and also wheelchair race. And 
I managed to um, come first in that wheelchair race while it was pouring with rain. It was really, really hard. But the reason that I got through it was because I had people behind me pushing me to be able to do it. Going kayaking, I, I honestly, I probably kayak almost once, once a month, um, if not more. And kayaking is a huge thing in my life because it's going on water. And when I go on water, I feel like that I don't have a disability any longer because I'm not sitting in my wheelchair. And I get to actually um, participate in an activity in the same way as somebody else would um, who's sitting behind me. So just doing little bits and pieces. So some of these um, places was, um, for example, this particular video that's here and it's on the side, so I do apologise. But the reason this is so huge for me is because 23 years after ending up in a wheelchair, um, I managed to be able to go on sand and get down a, um, a sand dune on the beach using a particular wheelchair that is quite expensive. Um, but for me, that was really, really quite a big event. Um, because using adaptive equipment and adaptive equipment is huge when it comes to, to people with disability because it enables them to be able to participate. And without that adaptive equipment, they're not able to participate as easily. So that's where that whole idea of funding comes about. Um, and often people think that, you know, people that have disability, they don't need to participate in recreation activities because that's not the most important thing. But I'm here to tell you, recreation activity actually is huge and it's so good for people with disability to get out of their mind and to stop thinking that they have a disability or thinking about the barriers that are out there and just being able to live in the same way as other people um, do. Travelling with disability, like that can be done in ways that can make it so much easier for people with disability and that is around people knowing what kind of questions to ask who to actually communicate um, with, having the support networks, but also having people that work at the particular tribal departments knowing exactly what's going on. This is an example of a backpack that I can attach to the back of my wheelchair, which enables me to be able to, to go to the airport completely independently by myself because the wheels will move and go in every um, um, 24, the 360 degree um, movement by themselves and enables me to be able to, to be independent and not have to have somebody with me to take a massive backpack with me. This is in Amsterdam as well. well that was, and being on a, um, a ship, so a tour ship, being in Bangkok and riding a camel in the Northern Territory and that um, going around Uluru, and I got to do the 10 kilometre walk around Uluru because I had the, the supports to be able to actually do it and swim in a waterfall across the Northern Territory, in, um, um, which was um, absolutely amazing. And I'm big on doing sit skiing. So sit skiing is huge, um, again, but it requires people to be around to support. And I guess for me, one of the big things that I can honestly say is, um, as was mentioned earlier, that um, getting to the top of the Acropolis was a huge um, accomplishment for myself and for my friends um, that I got up there with because it wasn't particularly wheelchair accessible, um, but with that determination to be able to do it, but also to, to remember, like to have that belief in oneself because Often the reason that we don't do things is because people tell us that we can't do it. And, you know, most things can be done in a particular way. It might be different in the way that it needs to be done, but it's not because, um, you know, somebody telling us that we can't do it. It's about how do we work out? How can we do it in a different way that we can achieve that particular activity? And I guess my greatest accomplishment was when um, I've sailed a tour ship from Hobart to Sydney, but also from France to Holland in 2019, where we were part of a tour ship race. Um, so there was 25 tour ships across the world, and we came third on that um, on that race. Um, and this accomplishment was is that 
I'm actually um, there where I managed to pull myself up 20 metres up into the crow's nest so I could see the view over Holland. So I did that by myself and I did that in three and a half minutes. Um, so that was a, a huge accomplishment for me. Um, I might not have been able to move for the next day, but I really enjoyed the fact that I got to do that. And I was quite happy that I got to do that. And also being able to sail across the, the Bass Strait in um, um, Hobart. And at this point we had like eight dolphins swimming under us and we were in full sail and sailing across um, um, Sydney. Um, so sailing and kayaking are huge things and often are things that people like doing when they do have disability is being on water. And pushing through my fears, I guess um, the biggest thing for me was that um, two years ago, I became the first international instructor for the um, fitness instructing um, known as Pound. And Pound is where you're using drumsticks to do um, um, things around fitness, but also Pilates and yoga. And I became the first international um, instructor that has a spinal injury. And this is a, a picture after my first class and the first um, song that I choreographed. And the song that I choreographed was Footloose because I thought it was quite ironic given the fact that I can't use my feet. And again, like doing things around um, going into um, talking about travel in magazines, you can go into that if you look into my, my website. So that's sitting low, reaching high. I've got information there and um, stuff around blogs, etc. And thank you very much for your time. And I do hope that everybody just remembers that no ability is not enough. We all have ability within our ability and we've got to use what we have and be like really strong about that because you know like people will always sit down and say that you can't do something or you can't be something and every single person can be even if you're somebody that has no voice because you've got like your non-verbal or you've got a speech impairment every single person can communicate and you know you you deserve the world and the world is out there for you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Mel. Oh, I feel I've been on a global adventure with you and that adventure is in me. I think I feel more courageous and I think everyone who's watching feels that. And I think you've, all, you've infected all of us with just this uh, sense of courage and adventure. And you know, Mel, um, can you disable the screen sharing for a minute? Yep, I can do that. Sorry. So I can uh, see you better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, Mel, in India, all the devas, all the gods have a vahana. It's a power vehicle. And when I was seeing you in the wheelchair, I was like, that's her power vehicle. Like, that's her vahana. And that's how I felt throughout the presentation that this was your personal power a uh, creature, thing, machine, and you were just traveling and you were taking us with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate this opportunity. Yeah. Uh, so I will give me a moment. So Mel, uh, the World United presents the certificate of speaker to Mel Harrison for being an esteemed speaker in the Global Transformation Festival 2021 Australia. I handed this to you on behalf of Dr. Yugander and Grandma Parisha. Thank you so much, Mel, for being with us.